Dr. Holden, you have testified several times listening to you that uh, given the extensive review by the National Academy of Science and using information based from NOAA, NASA, and a whole host of other, of other data sets, that there is no reason to uh, revise their fundamental conclusion that humans are contributing to change in climate, and NOAA not to change a fundamental conclusion that the oceans are becoming more acidic. Mr. Sensenbrenner suggested that there's some scientific fascism, and that's a quote, is there any evidence of fascism in the NASA organization, of scientific fascism associated with this? I'm not even sure exactly what that term would mean, but I, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of any uh, cabals, conspiracies, uh, misbehavior in uh, the characterization and use of data in NASA or NOAA. Well, I tell you, it, it's troublesome to me the people who put the men on the moon, the people who discovered water on, on the moon, the people who are doing great research, figuring out how the oceans are becoming acidic, some of whom are my constituents, it's disturbing to me that people would come to, to this chamber and call them fascists. I got to tell you, I got a problem with that. I don't think that's right. These men and women are doing the best they can to provide us data and conclusions to the best of their ability. And they, through their professional work, have reached a very, very strong consensus on these scientific issues who are working for Uncle Sam. And I think it's wrong to say that about them. And there's a little emotion in my voice because I've seen in my neighborhood what this phenomenon is doing. I'd like to be able to catch salmon and my grandkids, who celebrated his first birthday Sunday, to catch salmon that live on pteropods maybe 50 or 60 years from now. And when people watch what I watched and say that this is just big, a big scientific fascist conspiracy, that are ginning this stuff up. I got a problem with that. I'll just ask you, uh, Dr. Luchemko, I, uh, I was at a pier in Seattle about six months ago and a NOAA ship docked, and it had a bunch of NOAA scientists on it who were discovering the, uh, investigating the, the rate of acidification off the Pacific coast. And when they were explaining to me their findings, their jaws were kind of agape because what they told me is that the rate of acidification was stunning to them, particularly in the shallow waters off our Pacific coast. They explained to me that, as I understand this correctly, the waters are more acidic the lower in the water column they have been, but now very acidic levels are becoming very close within 150, 200 feet of the surface. And this was shocking to them. And the only explanation they had was that CO2 is going into the atmosphere and disturbing the equilibrium of this process that's been going on for eons. Could you tell us about what your, what your information is about that? Mr. Congressman, I think the rate uh, of change in ocean uh, acidification has surprised many people. Uh, and uh, it is absolutely the case that uh, off the west coast of the United States, where winds blow along the coastline and push the surface waters away from the coast, which pulls up cold, nutrient-rich, low oxygen, and lower pH water to the surface, that that's where we are seeing some of the greatest uh, increases in acidity uh, happening uh, around the world. And it is of deep concern because those areas, as you well know, are historically very, very rich our wonderful productive fisheries off that area so, are in large part a consequence of this upwelling. I appreciate that. I want to ask, is there anybody in this room, including the two witnesses and my Republican colleagues and my Democratic colleague, is there anybody in this room who has information to suggest that the oceans are not becoming more acidic? Has anybody got information like that? Anybody? Has anybody got an explanation why the oceans are becoming more acidic other than the fact that there's massive amounts of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere? Has anybody got an explanation for that? I haven't heard any. And yet people are trying to gin up this controversy because you know why? It's not because they're not intelligent. It's because they're afraid that we can't solve this problem. And I think if we had a little more confidence in ourselves and our ability to solve this problem, we would open our minds to the scientific information that is becoming available to us. And this idea of equilibrium, I'll just try one more. I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand the idea of equilibrium. 
To me, it's like this. Is this a fair metaphor? A guy goes to the doctor. He says, the doctor, I've gained 10 pounds. Well, have you changed your behavior at all? Yes, I've started eating a huge banana split at lunch and dinner every single day. And he goes, well, it's obviously you've been eating more food. And he goes, no, no, it's not the banana split. Look at all the other food I've, I've eaten. It's the other stuff I've, that's 85% of my caloric intake. That's 85% of the CO2 that's going into the atmosphere. Don't look at the banana split. Don't look at the coal-fired plants. Don't look at the cars. Is that kind of a metaphor for what we're facing here? Not bad, huh, for an, for an, for an amateur. Thank you very much.